Pastor Kara Kingston for our listeners that are here with us today. And to start us off, I'm going to ask Angel to come up and give us a comment. Com. All of our information is there. And I just also um, sorry, wanted to thank you all again for all of your amazing help that you guys have been providing. 
providing to us in the last year. So thank you so much. buckets on our altar. of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done, and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you, and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, 
and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery and to freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By your water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and in unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Please join me in singing our gathering song, The Day of Resurrection.
adopt us to be your children. Fill us with words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, our young people are dismissed to Sunday school. After healing a man unable to walk, Peter preaches to the people describing how God's promises to Israel have been fulfilled in Jesus. Through the proclamation of Christ's death and the resurrection, God is offering them forgiveness and restoration in Jesus' name. Peter addressed the people. You Israeli, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you, have, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you kill the author of life, whom God has raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong. Whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer, repent therefore and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Word of God. It's a reading from First John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not been yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as is. And all who have this hope in, pure, in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteousness, is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. In this account of an appearance after his resurrection, Jesus opens the minds of the disciples to understand him as Messiah. Jesus convinces them that he has been raised and sends them on a mission to proclaim the message of repentance and forgiveness. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. 
See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to be raised from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. You had to have been there. I wouldn't have believed it myself, except it happened to me. We have phrases like these to explain those things that are hard to believe, that are so incredible as to seem impossible. Take, for instance, while visiting with one of our members this week, we started swapping stories. She says, you know, looking around her house, this place is a little haunted. Oh, really, I say. And she goes on to tell me how her entire family have heard family members in the night that have passed away. Or they'll see a glimpse of someone walking by out of the corner of their eye. Never anything scary or frightening, but just definitely a presence that could be felt. Well, we don't think that these kinds of things happen, do we? I responded that I knew what they meant and told a couple of my own stories. I remember one time, um, a couple weeks before a resident died, all of a sudden, myself, another staff member, and the gentleman all heard a woman's voice. And he started crying, and he told us that it was the voice of his wife that had died uh, quite a few years back. Again, it was one of those things where I wouldn't have believed it except I was there. And after seeing a flash of someone in black disappearing around the corner at an old Episcopalian boarding school that had been come and assisted living, I later saw a poster of a man in a long black robe with a white um, collar at his throat. But our gospel today is not a ghost story. But it seems that in today's gospel, the disciples and they first saw Jesus, thought they were seeing a ghost, but it was so much more. But it says they were startled and terrified. They saw something that they didn't understand that defied their experiences and explanations of how the world works. They were startled because they were shocked and surprised and terrified because things like someone that you saw die to later stand in front of you and goes on to ask for fish, well, these just aren't supposed to happen. Terrified because events like these you have absolutely no control over. Terrified because seeing a once dead man standing in front of you changes everything you ever thought about anything. And so suddenly, just like that, Jesus asks them, why are you frightened? Why do you have doubts that rise within you? Now, I know that Jesus is smart enough to understand that if he's going to just pop into someone's existence where he hadn't been before, they're going to be a little startled. It's hardwired into us, but I think that Jesus asks this question to point out something that is fundamental to human behavior and to use that to teach a lesson about himself and God's work on this earth. And that this whole episode got recorded into our scriptures because, like Jesus, the word of God has something to teach us. Again, Jesus is no ghost. 
He reminds the disciples that he is God, come to them held within a body, one that you can touch and see. The proof of his identity lying in the scars and his hands and his feet. And the disciples, they begin to see that this man in front of them really is Jesus. But you can imagine how this is still so much to try to wrap your head around. I can see them thinking something like, well, Jesus died and we all saw him. We saw his body taken off of the cross. We saw his body wrapped in linen cloths. We saw his body lied in a tomb. We saw a giant stone rolled in front of the door. We all saw that, right? But clearly, he's not dead now. What is it within us that keeps up believing? That keeps us believing? Oh, sorry. What is it within us that keeps us from believing the freedom that truth brings? that truth that we'd experience through God's freedom intended for each of us? Why do we cling to those old beliefs and those taunting voices within our mind that try to tell us that we're not very good, that don't serve us well, that trip us up and cause us to stumble? Why is it when my mother-in-law says, Kara, you got to fire that inner critic editor that I find that so difficult to do? Why do these old negative voices in our heads that flagellate us with our every insecurity have so much power over us? Hmm. And while it's hard to do, but not impossible, I have found that if you can replace those old tapes with a stronger, positive message that you can take that truth and freedom into yourself and that it can grow and become stronger and to push out all those other negative voices to the point where we begin to believe and then slowly, slowly, ever so slowly, we begin to change. Now with Jesus, the power of the truth, God's truth brought to us through Jesus, the very word of God, this process happened much more quickly. Obviously, we're talking about the power of the Son of God. Like another member of ours said at Ale and the Almighty, and this is a paraphrase, I don't think this person would use these exact words, the power of that Easter morning was that it took a bunch of men huddled in a room, scared for their lives, and made them men willing to give up those same lives for their belief in the power of of the resurrected Christ. Probably never imagined that you sounded that eloquent and theological. Today's good news seems to also say that our doubts and our questions and even our disbelief, that these don't just go away when Jesus suddenly appears in our midst. The doubts and the questions and the disbelief and the joy, it's all part of God's good news today. They're part of who we are, and I would even say, make faith possible. We're all like the man that comes in Jesus to Jesus and says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. One of my professors likened faith to a suspension bridge. On one side is doubt, and on the other side is belief. And it's that tension between the two that makes faith possible. The very origins of the word faith tells us a lot about what it's made of. It comes from the word pistis, which means trust. So I'm sure as children you played the trust fall game, you know, where you stand in front of someone and then you fall back. And the only thing that allows you to fall back is that you believe that ultimately they will catch you. But it's scary because you're still asking yourself, even as you're falling back, what if they don't? Once I did this as a children's sermon, the kid decided to fall forward, and I was like, ah! <laughs> I had to scramble to grab him. 
It's like, you weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> when we trust, even in spite of our questions and our incredulity, our belief wins out. We trust when we don't have all the answers and we don't exactly know how something is going to happen. But, but we believe in God and we believe in ourselves and we believe in other people anyway. And in that tension between doubt and belief, faith is made possible. In that realm of faith, we can take in the power of Jesus in spite of our experience that says he shouldn't be possible. We know his words to be true even though they confront our knowledge and our former understandings. We wouldn't believe except we experienced that very power of God and we all have our stories of those times when life seemed very much like a wet paper bag with the bottom threatening to give way and then suddenly everything changed. When I was in college, I struggled financially like many young people in that situation do. And I was in church one morning, and I do believe that the Holy Spirit showed up and started not just speaking to me, but bothering me. It was getting time for the morning offering, and I heard this voice say to me internally, Kara, take that last $75 out of your wallet and put it in the offering plate. I'm like, are you kidding? That's my last money. I was going to get some groceries when I left church and stopped by the grocery store afterwards on my way home. But this voice was persistent and it made me uncomfortable. And I got to the point where I was so uncomfortable that if I didn't give this offering, I knew I would have no relief. So when the plate went by, foolishly or faithfully, I don't know, I dropped my folded bills, the last of my money, Trust, winning out over all of my questions and doubts. So after church, I walked to the grocery store on the way home, and I went to an ATM, and wouldn't you know, there was 150 in my account that wasn't there before. Maybe I'm really bad at math. Maybe something didn't go through that I had anticipated. But in that moment, I experienced the power of God at work in my life using this experience and example to teach me about having faith and trusting in God. And that when you say that God will provide, this isn't just some kind of cop-out answer. And that I experienced God showing up in a way that startled and surprised me. Jesus suddenly appears among his bereaved followers and he startles them. And he reminds them of all the scriptures now fulfilled in him. And I think what a different perspective the disciples must have had, having learned the scriptures from the time they were little boys. And now here is the man who all of these prophecies have been fulfilled in. And they must have seen Jesus sitting among them and teaching them like he did so many times before. But how different all of these teachings must have looked in light of the resurrection. That, ah, now I understand. His resurrection made the true faith possible for them. Jesus' death and resurrection was something that they had experienced and was more powerful than any of their doubts and questions and disbelief. And they too would go out into all the world telling others the story of God's power and love that they personally encountered in Jesus the Christ. And we're called to do likewise. Where does Christ suddenly appear in our lives? asking for fish. What do we do? I think like the disciples, we allow Christ's words to work their power within us, to allow those words of truth to confront our fears and to combat our arrogance that we know all the answers, and to cause faith to rise within us to the point where we too 
give everything we are and have been and ever will be compelled to share the good news of God in our words and our actions because we just simply can't do otherwise. May it be so for you and for me, my friends. Amen. Please join me in singing our hymn of the day, Touch That Soothes and Heals, See My Hands and Feet. Now, this is technically a new hymn, but Sandy's been playing it in the background for a long time, so hopefully it'll sound familiar. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace. O oh God, our Creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms bring water to parched places and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. Oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. God of grace. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember an, our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. Remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And take a moment to share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. Of you who has raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, who was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and it comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And just to clear up any confusion as you come forward for communion, if you want to start on this side and work your way around, uh, 
That's how we'll go about this.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And I know, Jan, you had an announcement that you wanted to make about Earth Day. You thought you'd come to church without any advertisements. <laughs> okay. Earth Day is next, or we will celebrate it next Sunday and during coffee hour. And you're welcome to bring any plants that you have that you'd like to exchange. There will also be a place where you can find saying you have these to share if somebody else wants to come pick them up, or you could even bring a bouquet to give away. Uh, we do have a special project that since the cities tore out the entryway to Ruth's driveway and our entryway, we'd like to uh, plant roses there, and Linda Stenslin and Darlene Jepson are heading this up, whether they know they are or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as a, a Thursday, our, uh, at the Super Center, I went into Dr. Phil Meyer, and for people like detail, as I come in the bathroom, he was washing his hands, for people like detail. <laughs> anyway, first thing he said was to thank everybody for all the Easter cards that were sent to Jane. Uh, he really appreciated that. As usual, a man who comes through big time. The second thing is he said that uh, Jane had some falls, I think about six falls. Oh. She would not broken anything, but that was the report. And, uh, to give Phil's report, he's kind of torn between he has a condo in Omaha and an apartment in California. And he's kind of torn. He's got family in, out there, of course, it's Jane and his uh, daughter and granddaughter kids. And then he's got friends here in Omaha. So he's kind of torn between where to live. Just give that report. shoes. Um, these are people that have never been to a prom before, so they're really excited about this, and we're happy to get them ready for it. For men's, um, it doesn't have to be a full suit. It could be jacket, tie, uh, shirt, whatever works uh, for you in your closet that you're not going to wear anymore. So in the next two Sundays, I would be happy to um, get those and take them to Salem Methodist Church for you. Also, one more thing about Earth Day as we celebrate next week. Brian has given us some t-shirts, so you're welcome to take one home today and wear it next week. Thank you. I also um, heard a rumor that a, a certain pastor at Emmanuel is going to have her birthday, April 22nd. So in honor of that, Michaela has agreed to make me, I mean us, a cake. <laughs> so uh, come next Sunday and help me celebrate. Um, the only other thing I have to announce is that Allison from the County Public Health Department is going to be with us during coffee hour and giving a presentation on um, resources and things that you can connect with in our community. And do we have any other announcements for the good of our congregation? Seeing none, receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please join me in singing our sending song, O God of Every Nation.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.